sisters. Welcome to the Bistro. Jennifer Rothschild here with my friend, Apollo Boris. Good morning and hello to you. This is um, Bible Study Bistro Summer Edition. Summer Edition. We We're are going through 66 ways God loves you on Route, route 66. 66. We've been getting our kicks on Route 66. <laughs> I hope you've seen some of those videos and pictures. We have <laughs> had too. a lot of fun. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. <laughs> we love the summer at the Bistro because oh, yeah. it's shorter, it's sweeter, but it is a strong shot. That's right. Of God's word. That's right. Mm, yes. So we're glad you're here. When you show up, make sure you leave us your name, where you're coming in from, and what's your adjective. That's right. I'm, I'm looking up right here, right now. Oh, hey, Misty, our Bible Study Bistro um, community manager. Hi, Misty. Good morning, sister. Mm -hmm. She's saying nothing to drink today, but she is feeling great. Oh, good. So, great is a good um, adjective. It is. So y'all just say good morning. Tell us where you're tuning in from so I can give you a shout out. Mm -hmm. Tell us what's in your cup. And Jen. Yes. <laughs> okay. First of all, we have our Route 66 swag. Yes, we, we do. Have our we have our cups. <laughs> Y'all remember when we went shopping? Oh, we do. Okay, we have our I'm cups. chuckling because um, our own Dr. Phil is in the house. Yes, he is. Ooh. What is he doing? I well, felt he him. He just crawled under the table. He did because I thought, is that the Lucy the dog? It was Phil the husband. <laughs> Phil the husband. <laughs> what were you doing under the table, honey? Removing your your jacket over there. Oh, thank you. He was cleaning up our set. He's cleaning up. <laughs> All right. Thank you for, thank you, Stage We love Ann. Dr. Phil. <laughs> okay. So back to our swag. We have our Route 66 mugs, but y'all, if you've been watching, you know <laughs> that we went somewhere. We went to the Queen City Sweets and Soda Shop. Yes. And we got several things, but one of them <laughs> piqued your curiosity and that was dirt soda. We bought dirt soda. We did. It says shoveled and bottled in the USA. <laughs> Pure cane sugar. I'm sure this is a real. Oh, it's going to be so sweet. But <laughs> okay. we said we would drink dirt soda. We're going to we're going to give you the dirt on the dirt soda. Okay. Okay. I'm pouring you just a little, <laughs> and I'm going to pour me some. Okay. Smell it and tell us what it smells like. Well, it does not smell good. I'll be honest. Does it smell dirty? It smells oh. like licorice -y a little. Yeah, a little. Are you drinking? Nice and bubbly. Not yet. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's okay. drink. Go. Oh, <laughs> that's not good. It's not good. I'm not recommending it, folks. Yeah, no, avoid the dirt soda. <laughs> it is a little flat, too. I mean, yeah, it's a weird flavor. Yeah. Okay. So there's the scoop on the dirt. Uh, yeah. It almost smells like it has a cleaning solution in right. it. It's disgusting. Okay. It's disgusting. <laughs> Let's just talk it like it is. Don't waste your calories no, on dirt soda. Or your money. All right. right. Moving Absolutely. on to better adjectives. Yes. What is your adjective today? Okay. My adjective today is uh, relaxed, hmm. which is a nice adjective to have. I don't always have that adjective. That is lovely. Well, I have a, a re. Yeah. What is yours? Adjective refreshed. Ooh, why? And I'm going to tell you why, because I've not told Jen this about something I got to do Saturday night. Mm. Silver Dollar Silver Dollar City <gasps> is a fun place in Branson, Missouri, which is close to us. And they often have concerts in their Echo Hollow. It's like an outdoor amphitheater. Mm -hmm. I'm sure some of our Bistro uh, sisters have been to yeah. Silver Dollar City. It's so fun. So they had Chris Tomlin <gasps> in the house on, on Saturday, Saturday night. Oh, I bet so, that was so good. Yeah. So here's the deal. He shared that they had been out the week before, and it was the first time that they've been out since, you know, pre-COVID. Yeah. But the bummer is, like, most of his band got COVID. Oh. Sorry, Chris Tomlin band. Yeah. And, uh, of course, we're praying for them, and I, I, I assume by this time they're better. Yeah. But as a result, Chris came with his guitar. Oh. And it was just worship. It I would rather him. have that. I know. It was super um, just laid back oh. and chill. And it was like church. We just worshiped and everybody, like, I don't know, five or 6,000 people in that amphitheater outside. Mm. It was hot and humid, crazy. And he just led us in worship. And every person sang every word, every song. And it was so refreshing. Yeah, that gives me chills. That's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. So it just helped kind of get my eyes off of all of this. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Back up to father. To, so anyway, that just refreshed. I'm so happy you so got to do that. That's my adjective. That's a good adjective. Isn't it good? All right. Y'all share with us some of your adjectives. Okay, so, so hit me up here on some comments. And um, I want us also, while we're waiting for people to check mm -hmm. in, to talk about 
what we've been doing on Route 66. <laughs> we've been getting our kicks on Route 66. We sure have been. And by the way, before you say that, let mm -hmm. me just say, today is the first time we're actually getting to broadcast live to YouTube. Yes. So some of you may have just popped in because it showed up on your feed and you're like, who are these women and what is this? This is the Bible Study Bistro. I'm Jennifer Rothschild. This is Paula Voris. And we've been getting our kicks on Route 66. All summer, what we've been doing with our Bible Study Bistro sisters is going through my book, 66 Ways God Loves I'm showing you. them because it's a pretty book. So if you just yep. joined us, welcome to the Bistro. We're really glad you're here. All right. Now, Paula, okay. let's review what we've been doing on Route 66. Okay. So we went to the hotel where Elvis, you know, Elvis slept. slept. Yes. So that was fun, right? Very we had a fun. video. You got to see that. Mm -hmm. We went to the Galois Theater. Oh, Tell them about so the Galois. Fun. Well, it's a historic theater in Springfield, Missouri, and it happens to be a Route 66 address. And it was fascinating. We got a private tour. That's going to that's on the video, too. Yep. And um, I believe it was posted. Oh, my goodness, y'all. It was so much fun. I've been to concerts there. You've been to concerts there. I've been to Michael W. Smith there, the mm -hmm. Friends Tour, and it was fantastic. One of the things we learned that was not captured on the video is that if there's ever a tornado in Springfield, Missouri, you should run to the Galois. Absolutely. Because there was something about the way it was constructed that we were told. Um, the steel girders yes. with covered with concrete, it's like massively strong. Nothing's going to knock it down. Nothing's going to knock it down. down. So, okay. So check out that video. If you have not yet, Joy gave us this amazing tour and mm -hmm. um, also said, if you're ever in Springfield, come by and she will give you a tour at the Galois Theater. Yes. Too. And it's worth going. It's so it fun. Is. Of course, that's on Route 66. That's right. why we were there. Right. Then the soda and candy shop, which yes. we've already talked <laughs> which about. Which we drank our dirt to prove we uh, were there. That's right. And you had a chocolate soda. Did you drink that? No. Because oh, they all want to know how it was. So we had this great conversation on Facebook and mm -hmm. our group yeah. about chocolate soda. And some folks have had it. Some people talk about I chocolate didn't even wine. Chocolate wine? Never even heard of a thing like that. No. So that was interesting. But we had a bigger conversation about what do you call it? Do you call this soda or pop or a Coke? <laughs> if you're from the South, I grew up calling it Coke. Everything was a Coke. Yep. What kind of Coke the server would say, would you like? I'd like a Dr. Pepper. Yeah. All right. That so was Donna, sound. Donna said she calls it soft drink. Um, Susan said growing up in Southern Kentucky, she called them cold drinks. So yes, it oh, definitely depends on where you live. Your region. Yeah. Okay. And then Teresa shared with us that when she lived in Mexico, she had to tilt the bottle upside down to make sure there were no cockroaches. in. Okay. It. Bless you, <laughs> Teresa. That kind of, that would, that maybe that's what's in the dirt soda. I don't know. <laughs> uh. Okay, so those were fun things. And coming up, should we tell them what we come, what's coming okay, up? Okay, we've got to tell you because we've been laughing about this. All right, just so you know, Paula and I went to Uranus, Missouri. It's on Route 66. And yes, it's just as middle school as you think it is. And perhaps more. Perhaps more. <laughs> so when you get middle-aged women in a middle school environment, I just... The, the results are unpredictable, yeah. but we have a fun video that we're pulling together that you guys will get to see. You'll, yes. you'll, you'll love it. You'll I hope. You'll see that in a bit. So yeah, Uranus and it's a fudge factory. Oh, I mean, let's, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. We're moving on from that. <laughs> okay. So we've asked you what you are loving about Route 66. And so Annette um, grew up in Bartlesville. Oh yeah. Oklahoma. Lived mm -hmm. in Springfield for a while and then in Albuquerque. So she says that Route 66 is always leading home. Oh, I love that. That's a beautiful thought. Deanna um, talked about the Wigwam Motel and oh. posted a picture. So like they're wigwams, like teepees. Okay, that's fun. Wouldn't that be fun? And Very. some of our other Bistro sisters commented that they had actually stayed there. Oh, that's super How fun. fun. Is that? Yeah. Carolyn posted some pictures of the Gilmer's Car Museum in Michigan. Oh. And Jan um, said it goes right through the heart of Springfield, Illinois, where she grew mm. up. Yeah. So another home thing. And Paula shared a picture of a clock. That she got while she was traveling on Route 66. That was really fun oh, to see. Oh, I love that. Um, Nancy had just been on Route 66 in Flagstaff, Arizona. Oh, so she posted a picture for us as well. I love that y'all are doing that. Thank you. Right? This is so much fun. It just makes it fun for all of us. It does. So check in. Let us know where you are coming in from. So we want to hear where you're at, what you're drinking, what's in your cup. Our cup had dirt, dirt soda. soda. So I am switching now to water. <laughs> to water. That's probably smart. <laughs> Good old water. That's probably smart. And we want to hear your adjectives. 
Oh, Phil's going to try the dirt soda. Oh, Phil, are you going to try? What do you think? It tastes like dirt. <laughs> exactly. It tastes Ooh. like dirt. So we've been having a blast on Route 66. We've been loving what you guys are sharing on Route 66. But of course, the heartbeat of what we are doing this summer yeah. comes from 66 Ways God Loves You. Yeah. We are going through the whole Bible and reading uh, just a little tidbit about every book of the Bible. And we're going to see, of course, as you have been, how God is communicating his love to you uniquely through that book of the Bible. And the ladies have shared some really good stuff that okay, they've been reading. Such good yeah. things. I tell you, I sit down and scroll through comments and I just feel like the Lord encourages me mm -hmm. through those. So I agree. keep posting. If you've not had an opportunity to read other people's posts, do so. I yeah. can guarantee you, you will be encouraged. Mm -hmm. So I have um, spent some time kind of looking back through over the last month, the things that we have been um, talking about and reading. And so I want to talk through that a little bit. This Perfect. Morning, Jen. Yeah. So, okay. We have so far gone through Genesis through Acts. And then this week we're going to be looking Romans through Ephesians. Okay. So that's what we're doing right now. But uh, Ezekiel through, through Amos, Melissa said that Ezekiel um, reminded her that um, no matter what someone's age or circumstances, God can call them. Mm, Good reminder. That. Yes. Susan said, wow, I just read the pages on Hosea. It's almost too good to believe, isn't it? Mm. The unconditional love God has for us. The following statement hit her right between the eyes. Though we have broken God's heart, God seeks not to punish us, but to dress us in robes of purest white. Mm -hmm. You were not intended for chains. You were chosen to be a beloved bride, safe in the promise of God's love. Doesn't that just blow your mind? She said, Aww, amen, yes, sister. It does, it does. It sure does. And then Susan said, wow, what a list of promises in this week's reading. God can turn my valley of dry bones into a wellspring of hope. God walks with me through the hard stuff. Mm -hmm. I am not intended for chain, chains. God redeems me. Hard places lead to God's blessings and God's power is greater than the powerlessness I feel. Wow. Great summary. Then she did mm -hmm. good. She really did. Yeah, Susan did a great summary. Mm -hmm. Then we moved on Obadiah through Habakkuk. Mm -hmm. And Lynn said that Habakkuk didn't rejoice because his problems changed. He rejoiced because his perspective changed. Don't we all need that reminder? That has been such an important reminder for me in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, mm. so good. God has lifted my spirits and always when I needed an encounter with him. But I had to draw near to him to have that encounter. Mm, I good. love that reminder, Lynn. Yeah. And then Heather said that Jonah reminded her that my human frailty can't mess up God's sovereignty. Aren't we thankful? Oh, oh my goodness. Yes, in DD. Mm -hmm. Then we moved on Zephaniah through Malachi. And Diane um, commented that Zephaniah shows her that God doesn't get tired of her. <laughs> no, sister. He does not. No, he doesn't. Mm -mm. And Denise loved Haggai because she's doing the Take Courage oh, Bible study yes, right now. Yeah. And had just read and studied that verse, um, Haggai 2.9, where it says, The glory of the present house will be greater than the glory of the former. Mm -hmm. And in this place, I will grant peace. Yes, it's such mm -hmm. a beautiful promise. So good. And then Heather um, in Malachi, even when I talk back like an ungrateful child, <laughs> anybody? <laughs> God holds back his anger and gives me kindness instead. Amazing. That is so good. It is so amazing. So good. Okay. Wow. And then we, then we went to math. We got to, we the made new it Testament. to the new Testament. Yeah. Right. So we're in Matthew. Journey along. Mm -hmm. And Heather um, said in Matthew, God pursued me. He came to seek me mm -hmm. and to save me. He initiates companionship with me. He draws himself to me. His love is limitless. Yep. Good word. And uh, you're Linda in Mark. He is in the boat with me, in sister. the boat. In the boat. And then Julie, God with us. Remind yourself every day. He is with us in everything we go through. He already experienced it. You know, Julie, I'm so grateful you wrote that because that is a good reminder. We need to remember. Yeah. We often feel the most isolated and alone when our world is chaotic or going crazy. And Mark did teach us that Jesus is always in the boat. Not only is he in the boat, but he knew the storm was coming. Yeah. And so that means wherever you are, I know in some parts of the country, you know, our, our, 
pandemic is still very active and it's causing a lot of stress and concern and fear. And so just know that you are not alone. You may be in the middle of transition. You may be trying to navigate a new normal, but you are not alone. Jesus Mm. is in the boat. He's in the boat with us. He's in the boat right here today, whether you're watching on YouTube or at the Bible Study Bistro on Facebook, wherever you are, he's right there Mm. with you. And he's right there with us. So let's just... Let's just pause and let's tell him thank you um, for being with us. Amen. Okay. Lord, I'm asking you right now that each person watching, whether it's in this immediate moment or at the moment they're watching it later, that they will have a, a, a super awareness of your presence with them, that they are not alone, that you are as close as their heartbeat, that you are as present as the air that they breathe. Lord, thank you that there is nothing we face that you haven't already faced for us. And so we need not fear, but that we just need to rest in your presence and your provision and remind ourselves that you are Emmanuel, God with us. Mm. So thank you for being with us right now. And would you guide the rest of our conversation so that it will give life to each of us in Jesus name. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Okay, friends, before we jump into what we're talking about today, Jen, I want to look at some of our comments. Sure. So, hey, Judy from Texas. She says, hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. That sounds very Texas. We love our Texas women. Mm -hmm. Melissa is pumped to be here in Liberty Hill, Texas with coffee and Bible in hand. You go, Melissa. Yes. Okay. Misty likes our mugs. Hey, do you want some dirt soda? (laughs) I'll send you the rest of the soda, Misty. We'll we'll save it for you, girl. Hey, Jane from Springfield Mo is drinking tea and her adjective is protection. Oh, I like that. I do too. That's really a good, Mm. that's a good word. Diane's coming in from the Queen City, Texas coffee and her cup and feeling happy. Oh, good. Linda from New Hampshire. Hey, Diane. Let's see. I love that y'all are coming in from all over the country. Uh, yep. Louise from British Columbia, Canada. Mm. Good morning. Hey, Jill in Nebraska checking in. She's sitting on the couch with her mom. Hey, mama. Hey, mama. We're praying <laughs> for you all, Jill. Um, Linda is thankful. Hey, Valerie uh, from Missouri. Her adjective is relieved. Oh, she, oh, she had just had some blood drawn, so she is glad it's done. Oh. We are too, sisters. Yeah, relief is one of my favorite adjectives. Another Canada sister, Sharon, is drinking water and is energized. Good for you, girl. Those two may be related. <laughs> water, yeah, water and energy. And energy. <laughs> hey, Janet, drinking water. Louise has loved all the photos and videos on Route 66. Good. We're so glad. We are loving them, too. We're having Keep a good sharing. time. Yep. Judy is loving the book. Hey, Ellen's having California coffee with creamer. Oh, no, maybe she's in California. With having coffee, coffee and creamer. And creamer. <laughs> and is excited. And then Annie is joining us from India on YouTube. Oh, I'm so glad you're Welcome here. Welcome to the Bistro. We are yes. thrilled that you are here. We are so happy you're here, Annie. Thanks for popping yeah. in. Yep. Speaking of pop, they're weighing in. Sharon calls it pop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wonder what they call it in the India, Annie. We were discussing whether it's called soda, pop. Or colas. Yeah. When it's a carbonated beverage in a bottle. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Deer Park, Texas. Diane calls everything Coke. Coke. Yep. Jennifer's yep. feeling hopeful. Ooh, Kathy is drinking raspberry tea and feeling content. I love that. Mm, that may be related too. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Okay. Keep on commenting, folks. We love to hear from you. Absolutely. We do. Yeah. So one of our book overviews this month, Jen, was Amos. Which is very near and dear to my heart right now. Yes, you are spending a lot of time with him. And so I wanted to kind of take over Bistro today (laughs) and interview you a little bit because we have shared with our Bistro sisters why you're hanging out with Amos right now. Mm -hmm. So I am calling this the birth of a Bible study. Oh, I love that. The birth of a Bible study. The making of Amos. That means there's probably labor pains involved. Do you feel it? (laughs) And making Amos famous. Making Amos famous. So y'all read the summary of Amos this time in our reading in 66 Mm -hmm. Ways, but we're just going to dive into it, huh? We are. I love it. Jumping in. Okay. Ladies, stick with me. Feel free to comment if you have a question. Maybe I'll get to ask Jennifer that about Amos. So I know that you are right now writing your next Bible study on Amos. Right. So to begin with, I want to know why Amos? You know, um, when I was sharing uh, with a friend of mine who happens to be a a Christian speaker, and I told her, 
I'm, I really feel like I need to write a Bible study on Amos. And her response was, why? <laughs> and that became for me my initial reason why. Mm. Because it is an overlooked book. It's often a misunderstood book be because it's it deals with a lot of judgment and condemnation, which we associate as negative. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and it is, it's a hard, it's hard. There's hard stuff in Amos, but the reason I believe the Lord led me to um, Amos is because I, I'm always mindful of the underdogs and the overlooked and my minor prophets, I just feel like are kind of overlooked. And I want women to be able to access the truths that are in those books. Mm. Well, okay. So you mentioned the minor prophets and any of us who have done any of your studies, we know that you love the minor prophets, right? Mm -hmm. And you've even you just shared why, but you are so gifted in making those accessible to us. Mm -hmm. So we are very grateful for that. Well, I, you know what, Paula? So by the way, if y'all aren't sure who the minor prophets are, they are in the Old Testament and they're not called minor because they're less significant. They were just named minor prophets versus major prophets because the books are shorter. Right. Right. It's a size. Thing. Yeah. It's a size thing. So like um, I've written on Hosea. Mm -hmm. He's a minor prophet. And I've written on Haggai. Right. So now I'm going to try to make Amos famous. <laughs> there you go. Amos famous. So let's talk about what has happened so far okay. in this process, because, uh, you know, you kind of mentioned labor pains. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like you're... <laughs> Well, I remember, pregnant. yes, it is like being pregnant <laughs> yeah. um, mm -hmm. and, and carrying the weight of it too, feeling mm -hmm. the weight of it. Um, I remember just feeling led to Amos and I remember reading it through the first couple of times thinking, why, why this is so hard and it's so difficult. Why would I do this? And what woman is going to want to study Amos, mm -hmm. right? So I, um, I remembered a time when I was in the hospital room with my little niece she was probably 12 or 13 at the time. And my hero dad, her grandfather, and, you know, we were all taking turns as family, keeping vigil mm -hmm. over my daddy while he was sick. Right. And I was sitting on the end of the bed and little Juliet, she was just sitting over in one of those leathery plastic leather chairs. Mm -hmm. And she was trying to read a book. Well, I was asking her a million questions. What are you doing in school? What's your favorite subject? And just nervous chatter mm -hmm. is what I was doing. And um, she was reading a book. So I said, uh, oh, you're reading a book. What's the name of your book? And she tells me, what's it about? And she tells me that it's about a horse. And I quickly said to her, oh man, I, I don't like books about animals because I get so involved and I'm so tenderhearted. And then I think, oh my gosh, they're going to die. And I don't want to be sad. <laughs> you know, I way overthought <laughs> this. Well, Juliet loves animals. So I figured she'd feel the same way. And so I said to Juliet, oh, this must really be hard for you because you know, I know how much you love animals. Aren't you nervous that the horse is going to die? Mm. And she said this, no, Aunt Jennifer, I'm not nervous the horse is going to die because the horse is the narrator. Mm. Well, I'm sitting on the end of the bed thinking, the horse. oh, meaning if the horse is telling the story, then clearly he's going to make it to the right. end of the book. He's, he's not still gonna... alive. Right. And of course, I thought she was brilliant. <laughs> um, of course, Aunt Jennifer. Of course, Aunt Jennifer is going to think she's brilliant. But as I was studying Amos, I thought of Juliet and I realized that if hope is the narrator of Amos, then we don't have to be nervous about all the difficult parts. If hope is the narrator of Amos, which it is, then that means hope's going to be the last word of Amos and we can deal with the difficult judgments. Mm -hmm. And so one afternoon, Sunday, I, I remember it so vividly. I was sitting on our brown leather couch. And I had read through Amos so many times and just seeking the Lord, how can I teach this? I had outlined the whole book and literally it was like a spiritual download mm. where I began to notice what are the basic um, condemnations? And then it was like the Lord just said, well, turn them into invitations. So instead of focusing on all the condemnations, I've turned each of those condemnations in Amos into an invitation so that when we receive this invitation, for example, to live faithful, mm -hmm. to live chosen, to live humble, et cetera, then we are invited to live our best life ever. I call it the God life. And when we live the God life, then we live the good life. Mm -hmm. And so I literally have called the book um, that I'm writing on Amos an invitation to the good life. Oh, in fact, that sounds very inviting. We have um, we have a couple of uh, book covers right there. Let's oh. just show them. Yes. So part of the process is um, for those of you who can see this on video right now, 
Paula's got just a couple of samples of these book covers that I just got back from the artist. Um, so you can see some of the options. This is number one. Can you see that there? Number one. So it has the title, Amos, An Invitation to the Good Life. Okay, that's one. Now I'm going to show number two. A little different feel. Yeah. Okay. And then number four. Very different feel. Mm-hmm. So you see the artist tries to take mm -hmm. the idea of what I'm trying to communicate, and then the artist communicates it visually. Mm -hmm. So it's a collaborative process. And by the way, we're going to want your feedback. So Bible Study Bistro Ladies on the Facebook page, we're going to make sure we post these so y'all can give an actual vote. Mm -hmm. um, so, and if you're not following me on Facebook in general, you YouTubers, please follow me because we're going to have those book um, covers there too. And we'd love your feedback. And you know, we will have an opinion. Yes. All the ladies <laughs> got counting on it. Yes. We are counting on it. Yes. Okay. So, so we're looking at book covers, um, but back up even before that, like, yeah. okay, so you knew it was going to be on Amos. You began your process of that, but then you have to do a book proposal, I'm assuming. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. So that happened. Yes. Yeah, so I wrote a book proposal. Um, in fact, you probably have that there. I do. And that is where I give an, a description of what the book is about. I even created what is called value statements, which is basically, if you study Amos, you will get Boom. It will help you, def you know, to um, stop self-defeating habits. It will help you to uh, become more an, of an expert about an overlooked book of the Bible. So I created value statements there. Right. Possible titles. Were, were possible titles. Even possible hashtags Which for social I media. Which I love that. Yeah. And then I go through, because this will be an eight-week Bible study, I broke up Amos into these eight different, basically, chapters. Mm -hmm. And uh, I annotate the outline. So I title it and then I annotate it, give a paragraph description. Mm -hmm. But because of the way I designed these Bible studies, I do four or five days a week of study. So I literally will say day one, here's the title, here's the scripture. Day two, here's the title, here's the scripture. So, um, and I outline it. And I will tell any of you who are ever interested in writing, <laughs> to me, writing a book proposal is almost as difficult as writing the book. But if you write a good book proposal, writing a book is so much easier. Mm. Well, I can see that. And y'all can probably tell how thick that is. That proposal is many pages mm -hmm. and it's very detailed. Very. And so I can see how that would be um, it, it, taxing to, to do. You have but to think of the whole thing. It, mm -hmm. Like that's your map. It is the map. There, right? That's right. And it's good because you can get disoriented in the process and you can go, I always, I go back Ooh, to the map. Every good. time I start a new chapter, I literally go to the proposal. I copy and paste that whole section of the proposal into that chapter. And then I use that as the outline of that chapter. So I don't have to rethink anything. Yeah, that's so good. But we went, Paula went with me to a writer's conference. Yes. In Nashville, Tennessee, where the publisher is, Lifeway. Right. And I think we popped in live with the Bistro Sisters. We did. That when we were there. So we got to say hello. So if you recall that. That was fun. And that's where we met with editors and mm. the video people and the, the artists and the marketing people. And we had a full day of helping to um, make sure that this is going to be the best it can possibly be. Right. Okay. So you did a proposal. You had the writer's conference. You are currently writing. Amos, mm -hmm. where yes. are you at? I am now on chapter five, which I call week five because it's an eight week study. And I'm actually, it happens to correspond with the chapters in the book of Amos. So we're focusing a lot on Amos chapter five. And in fact, Paula, the theme verse that I'm using mm. for the Amos Bible study, I always choose one theme verse. I call it my hook to hang the whole study on. Right. It's in Amos chapter five, verse four and or verse six, because that's the scripture where God is, through Amos is telling his people who have blown it <laughs> to come back, be yeah. restored, repent. And he says this, seek me and live. Mm. Uh, in verse uh, six, I believe, of Amos five, it says, seek God and live, yeah. which is which is the point yeah. that when you seek God, you will live mm. your good life. Yeah. When you choose not to seek God, you don't live your best life. And so then there's a few verses later. I believe it's um, Amos five, verse 14. Right. 
read that. I want them to hear what this says. After I've just told you twice that God has said, seek me and live, seek God and live. Now listen to this. Seek good, not evil, that you may live. Then the Lord Almighty will be with you just as you say he is. Now, isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. So there's this correlation between seeking God and seeking good. It's the same thing. Yeah. It really is. You cannot seek God and seek something other than good. And the result is that there's this renewed awareness of the presence of God. Mm -hmm. Because Israel was saying, hey, dudes, we can do whatever we want. We're his chosen people. God is with us. And God is saying, no, you seek good, mm. not evil. And then I really will be with you as you say I am in the renewed sense of my presence. And so mm. if you've ever read Amos, you know, there's a little bit of a feel in there. Um, it's a it's an important theme of, of justice for those who are oppressed, taking care of the poor, doing the right mm -hmm. thing. And it's a beautiful picture that we can seek God and therefore seek good. And when we do, when we are living the good life, then it brings good to us and mm. to everyone we encounter. Amen. I love that. Okay. So what is coming? Let's talk about what's coming. Obviously you're going to be finished writing the study. Yes. I will finish writing the study. My goal, it's due in October. And my goal as a type A is to have it done in September. And that gives me some time to go back and review. But I'm right. also doing that because I'm going to be teaching it locally at our church yes. to our women. So that way they'll get to do the study before it's published. And they will also then get to hear the teaching. And it gives me a chance to kind of get a test run on the teaching because mm -hmm. I will film the teaching portion, the video portion of this in February of 22. Right. And then it will be released in July of 22. Okay. So that's kind of where Amos is at yeah. in the process, right? Okay. You've given us a couple of little tidbits, but I wonder if there's like just a little something you can give us as a sneak peek mm. of, of making Amos famous. Okay. This I just wrote about. <laughs> so it's this may not be totally inspirational to you, but it'll make you smile. Okay. Amos is the only book in the Bible that I've ever studied and written on where I've written a whole day on the cows of Bashan. The cows. And okay, here's why. <laughs> so Amos is a farmer, y'all. Okay. Amos is a farmer. Big farmer. So he's used to, you know, all these ag agrarian illustrations. Right. So he calls these certain women in Israel cows, the cows of Bashan. Now, if, and here's why, because Bashan was this region, it's now the Golan Heights in Israel, but it was super fertile and everybody knew, you know, you want the best steaks, they come from Bashan because gotcha. these are the fattest cows. So he's calling these women cows of Bashan. And the reason he's calling them that is because they were wealthy. Mm. Consequently, they were heavy because in the ancient world to be yeah. plump, that was actually an indication you were wealthy, right? It was, was admirable. It was admirable. <laughs> My, have things changed? <laughs> well, let's go back to that. I know. <laughs> um, and so Amos is saying, you cows of Bashan, you oppress the poor. And you, and this is my favorite line. This is what I want you to hear. And you say to your husband, husband, bring me a drink. <laughs> I think that is the funniest thing. So I'm going to start using that with my husband because I'm just quoting scripture. Husband. Bring me a drink and see what happens and say, honey, it's just biblical. I don't think it'll go so well. Let us know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's just, but, but my point is about that. Amos is a no respecter of persons when he's mm. calling out, he's calling all of us, men, right. women, wealthy, poor. He's calling all of us to holiness and to loving our neighbor well as we seek mm. God and seek good. And some of the ways he does it is very creative. And I think you'll enjoy that. Mm. So good. Such good stuff. So I want to know um, what has been easy about this process? Because then, you know, I'm going to ask you what's been hard, what's been hard. What's been easy is motivation. Okay. Because I am so curious and I love to learn and I love to discover and I love the creativity of taking something that was, you know, basically nothing mm -hmm. and turning it into something. So my motivation has been the easiest part. The hardest part <laughs> has been constantly challenging myself to represent the word exactly as it should be represented mm. 
Yet at the same time, being very mindful that there may be a woman studying it who is a new believer or doesn't know Christ or she has taught scripture. And how do I make it completely accessible to each of those women where where the word of God truly brings her Mm. life? And it, it challenges us in all the most safe ways. Because when the Holy Spirit challenges us, it's always to bring us life, not condemnation. And so that's been my constant challenge. That's been the hardest part because there's hard stuff in the book. Hmm. There's hard stuff in the book. Yeah. That's okay. So that leads me to my last question. How can we be praying for you? Uh, in a practical way, I need um, dedicated time. Hmm. Our traveling has is beginning next week, and I've just had a lot of demands just within the, the ministry operation of what we do. And I need dedicated time, like hours at a time, alone mm-hmm. time without interruption. That's been harder to get, and I know it's going to remain difficult. So that would be my prayers. There would be a way to carve out time so that I could focus. Um, and then that kind of what I said was the hard part mm-hmm. that I do this in such a way that it is completely accurate because I'm totally dependent on the Holy yeah. Spirit here. I don't have a seminary degree. Dude, I can't even see to research. You know what I mean? Yeah. So this is hard. And uh, just to do it well and to do it right, to represent God's word well and to love women well, that dual challenge is my prayer. Mm. So Bistro Sisters, we want to pray for you today, Jen, and we want to continue to pray. Many of us have been praying for you already through this process Thank you. and we will continue. And so let's just pray together today um, for, for Amos and for Jennifer in this process. Father, we thank you for um, time together today. Lord, we thank you for getting to learn a little bit more about not only Amos, but also just a sneak peek into this upcoming Bible study. And so today we just pause together just as a just a big group of your sister, your daughters. We are sisters and we are praying uh, with Jennifer and for Jennifer for your will to be done. We pray for chunks of uninterrupted time of focus for energy, for opportunity to study. Lord, we pray for um, just a clean heart and a right spirit and that Jennifer would just be able to um, be filled uh, with your spirit and precious spirit that you will just write your message through her in this study. We're mindful of the process of writing and preparing messages and, and teaching this fall and recording and just releasing it and all of the different pieces to it. We pray your favor and anointing at each step of the journey. We pray that you will guard Jennifer's health, mm-hmm. Lord, that she will um, just have strength and energy that abounds, that, that the only um, explanation is it's because of you. We pray in advance for those of us who will have the great privilege and joy of going through this study and that the message that you have for us, that you will prepare our hearts even now for that. And then just going beyond around the world, Lord, your word, may your word go forth and may it produce fruit. Mm -hmm. So Lord, we thank you uh, in advance for all that you're going to do through the writing of this study. We pray this in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, my friends. I really do appreciate We're in this together. We are in this together and we're excited. Several comments about it. And uh, Shirlene asked if you were going to be teaching on Amos at our Fresh Grounded Faith in November here in Springfield, Missouri. Springfield, Missouri. We will have a Fresh Grounded Faith Conference November 4th and 5th. 5th and 6th. 5th and 6th. November 5th and 6th. And yes. I am theming that weekend, The Good Life, and I'm going to be teaching out of Amos. Yeah. So another little sneak peek for Mm -hmm. those of you who are in our area who want to make it a a girls weekend. Come. Come see us. Oh, Paula and I will be there. And those of you who listen to the 413 podcast, Casey will be there. It's Mm going to be fun. It's going to be a great weekend. Good stuff. Okay. So thanks for sharing kind of the behind the scenes stuff about Amos and making Bible studies. Uh, I was remembering a podcast on the 413 that you did with one of our Bistro sisters, Mm -hmm. um, Angela Kincaid. Mm -hmm. It was episode 72, Jennifer Spills the Beans About Writing. Yeah. And I remembered it because I not only listened to it, but I happened to be (laughs) sitting there. there. (laughs) 
while you and Angela were talking, and yeah. I'm sure Angela is going to pop on and say yeah. hello. Hey, Angela. <laughs> but I was sitting to the side eating my chicken salad sandwich <laughs> while these gals were talking shop. And we often have folks who are interested in the process of writing. And so that's a great um, podcast to listen to. It is. Because you kind of, you, you spill more of the beans. I did. Angela asked process. great questions. Yeah. And it was just a really good podcast. Yeah. So what, what number of podcasts Episode was Episode 72. And I'm sure that Missy will um, share a link to that in the comments. Yeah. That Jennifer spills the beans about writing. And that was the 413 podcast, by the way, if y'all aren't familiar with it, that is my podcast and it's just practical wisdom and encouragement, mm -hmm. biblical encouragement to help you live the I can, I can life. So, because I can. <laughs> and you can. We all can. <laughs> it's so good. And of course, on the Bistro on Thursdays, we always share what's coming out on the um on the podcast. Yes. And so we go deeper together with that on Tuesdays is our day to pray. But as we say, we pray every day. Yeah, at the every day is a prayer day at the Bistro. But there's always um, a post. And then on Sundays, as we continue to make our way through the 66 ways God loves you every Sunday, there is a post in our Bible study Bistro Facebook group, let you know what books we are overviewing that week. So you can be reading. And then that's the post we come back to mm -hmm. and post comments about what God is teaching us as we read those. So keep on doing that. This week, we're looking Romans through Ephesians. Okay. Romans through Ephesians is this week. Getting good. Good, mm -hmm. good. Okay. So then we're going to have more Route 66 pop-ins, videos, and pictures. We usually do Monday and Friday, a picture or a video. They've been so fun. Mm -hmm. We'll be back live together here at the Bistro Table in August. 24 because that will be a wrap up of 66 yes, ways. Yes, it will be at our last time that we'll discuss 66 ways God loves you. Yep. We'll, but we'll also let you know on that date what to expect for the fall. That's right. So let's talk about what is coming up. Like there's a lot of things getting ready to start happening. I know you are headed to Arkansas. Yes. Conway, Arkansas, which a, is close. It's close to us. And any of you uh, ladies at the Bistro who are near Conway, Arkansas, I have a conference called Fresh Grounded Faith. And at Fresh Grounded Faith in Conway, Arkansas, we will have Angie Smith Ooh. with us. And Michael O'Brien. And you can find more information at freshgroundedfaith.com. That's August 5th and 6th. 6th and 7th. 6th and 7th. I'm, I'm always a day early. Well, just remember, it's always Friday night. It's always and a Saturday Friday morning. night and Saturday morning. <laughs> right. Yes. So that's Fresh Ground at Conway. Yeah. And then you're going to Cincinnati, August 13 and 14 for what? Yes. This is for a Lifeway Women Live. So a lot of you who do Bible mm -hmm. studies will know a lot of the speakers who will be at this conference in Cincinnati, Ohio on August 13 and 14. And it will be me, uh, Lisa Harper, uh, Kelly Mentor, uh, Jackie Hill Perry, mm, good. Jen Wilkin. Uh, there's probably Is one or Christy two more. coming? She will be. She's in, at a different one. She'll be. Okay. Huh? No, no, she's no. <laughs> <laughs> We're all trying to help him. We're no help at all. <laughs> Sorry. I don't want to confuse anybody. Right. Cincinnati is just this. Check few. it out online. Yes. But yeah. go to Lifeway Women Live yeah. and you'll find out because those are some great women. But I'll also be in Austin, Texas later. Mm -hmm. And that's what Phil and Paula were mentioning those speakers. Gotcha. So, yeah. Okay. And then on August 26th. Oh, this is fun. This, this is, is fun. This is in our town. In Springfield here at Second Baptist, our church, mm -hmm. Margaret Feinberg will be joining us for more power to you an evening with Margaret Feinberg. It's going to be so good. Have y'all, yeah. if you have mm -hmm. done any of her studies or read her books, let us know in the comments. Yeah. Fight Back with Joy. She has a One new book called favorites. More Power to You. Yeah. It's so good. It is good. It's just about declaring God's truth, which we are all about here at the Bistro yeah. Table. Yeah. So that's August 26th, Thursday night at Second Baptist in Springfield. Mo, if you are local or close to local or we just want to come and be our guest, <laughs> come on. Yes. Come How do on. they get more information about that? Go to secondbaptist.org. Okay. You can check that out or, um, yeah. Second Baptist. That'll get you That'll the, get the easiest way. Okay. That's the easiest way. So lots of fun things coming up. But of course, August 24th, we are back here live in our bistro. Yes. And as you said at the top, not only are we live today in our in our Bible study bistro Facebook group, right? Facebook right? group. Yep. We are also live on YouTube. 
So, so that's fun. Mm -hmm. So welcome any of you who have come in halfway through. We're so glad you're here. We are. Yeah. We're so glad you're here. So I think that is it for today, my sister. It's a wrap. It's, it's a, a wrap. summer wrap. It's you and me and the dirt soda. I know. I think that we will share that with the backyard. <laughs> Maybe they grow your flowers. Maybe it will. Hey, y'all, we're so glad you joined us. And this will be also something you can watch later. So you invite your friends to watch it later, either on YouTube or Facebook group. But I'm Jennifer Rothschild. This is Paula Vorce. And we are so glad you joined mm -hmm. us for Bible Study Bistro. Love you guys. We love you. See ya. Live the good life today. Live the good life. Mm. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Okay. Do you want a little bit more of the dirt I'll soda? taste one little bit more. Okay, here's a little more. Just a little. <laughs> We should have gone with chocolate. <laughs> it doesn't smell good. Well, it almost smells like paint. Kind of earthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe paint. Ugh. Not, it's not any not better. One of our medicine. Own. Tastes like medicine. Okay, that's it. That's medicine. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> we'll go brush our teeth, Paula. <laughs> we should have done chocolate soda. We should Or great. Or orange. Or anything but dirt. <laughs> yes. Oh, such good stuff.